Context. Me, female 26, and my husband 32, welcomed our daughter several months ago. So far, we've agreed on every decision regarding our daughter, but the topic of piercing her ears came up, and he said he didn't like the idea despite me explaining that. Number one, it's a normal thing for babies, and number two, it looks pretty. Number three, no, it's not cultural. We're both white, but it's a great new experience in my opinion. He said he needed time to think about it, but weeks passed and he hasn't said okay yet. Mom suggested we do it behind his back, and he'll then come around and see for himself that it's a good thing, since he was having doubts and being indecisive. I was hesitant, but I agreed and chose a day where he was out all day. Thankfully, it went smoothly, but when my husband got home and found out, he lost his temper and went on about what a major breach of trust I just committed and how I should have never decided to do this without him, fully agreeing, since he's the parent too, and he got extra mad that I went behind his back and was being sneaky and untruthful about it. I tried to explain that first it was my mom's idea, and I didn't think he'd overreact like that, but he insisted that what I did was not okay, and that I had overruled him as a parent, and damaged the trust we have, and also put our daughter through pain and discomfort. So I had an argument with him, and told him he was acting like this was just his daughter. I'm the mother, and my opinion does have a heavier weight than his to some degree. He got offended by that, and went to stay with his mom, who called and scolded me for going behind her son's back and treating him as less than when it comes to our daughter. But I never understood why he thought that. He's now thinking about divorce and not talking to me now. I think he's being selfish by saying he needed time to think about it, and trying to stall without considering my point of view. Mom is on my side here, but he and my in-laws said I screwed up for making such a decision without his okay and going behind his back to get it done. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. I don't blame him for being angry. You were definitely sneaky and untruthful and then tried to blame your mom for it. Also, I'm the mother and my opinion does hold heavier weight than his at some point. What on earth makes you think this? I don't think his mother should have gotten involved, but you are still the biggest idiot. You are the idiot. It's a child, not a Christmas tree for you to decorate. And you explicitly went behind your husband's back for it too. And that's the thing. This is a permanent body modification, not an ornament. Now this kid will never be able to make that decision for herself. I'm extremely grateful to my parents for not getting it done for me as an infant because as I grew up, I leaned more masculine and made the conscious choice not to pierce my ears. Along with doing this behind her husband's back, OP never once reflects on the repercussions for her child after this procedure and is instead fixated on how her husband dared to call her out for going behind his back, something she admits to doing. It's possible that her daughter won't mind much as she grows up, but the fact that she never thought about her kid in this post bugs me. You are the idiot, OP. A wake-up call here is well-deserved. Jesus, OP, for me, it's not normal to get babies pierced. Where I live, it's more common to do it when they want it themselves. Should a baby need a piercing to be seen as pretty? That sentence made me feel sorry for your child. Apparently, her look is more important for you than her health and husband's consent. You screwed up big time. I have a stepdaughter, Rose and a bio daughter, Lily. Lily's dad is in the picture. Rose's mom is somewhat in the picture, but unfortunately is an addict and has some mental health issues and will not be at the wedding and can only see her occasionally with supervision growing up. Rose never really accepted me and that's okay, we didn't push her. I don't dislike Rose or anything, but there isn't much of a relationship. Rose and Lily dislike each other, but are civil. Lily got married a year ago, and my husband and I gave her a certain amount of money, and her dad gave her the same. We had the same amount set aside for Rose, but that does mean that Rose would only get half of what Lily got. Also, Rose knows what Lily got in total because it was brought up in front of her, which I know was a mistake, but she stayed with us for like a week waiting for our house to be ready, and it seemed weird to kick her out of the room. Anyway, we told Rose recently what we'd be contributing, and she made a face. My husband said he knows it's half of what Lily got, but Lily's dad paid the other half. Rose said it was fine, 
and then said we could keep it a couple of minutes later. My husband told her no, she could take it, and if she wanted to pay, she could pay what it doesn't cover. Rose got annoyed and said she didn't want it, and to leave her alone. Rose will not talk about it, and is mostly ignoring us. Rose says she's paying for it herself, but I heard from someone the groom's mother is now paying, and said she'd top what Lily got. The last time we saw Rose, my husband tried to talk about it again, but her fiancé snapped at us to leave her alone, and he made enough money to buy whatever she wanted. My husband is beside himself and asked if I'd consider doubling the money to make it even. I said no. We could do it, but it would be a huge amount to us and more than I'm willing to spend. It does suck, but at the end of the day, life isn't fair, and Rose and Lily have two different situations. My husband is annoyed and says I'm being cold, but he gets it that it is our money, and I'm standing firm on no. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. The expectation that parents pay for their children's wedding is so bizarre to me. We've never once had either side offer to give us money, and I've never expected it. We're adults. It's our choice whether or not to blow a large amount of cash on what's essentially a party. If a parent does contribute, it's a gift. It isn't some obligation, competition, or shopping list. Your stepdaughter's attitude really sucks. You are the idiot. It is equal in the grand scheme of things, but equal doesn't necessarily mean fair. She probably struggled with the fact she didn't have a mom in addition to a stepmom, but that her stepsister had both a dad and a stepdad. This was just another reminder for her. At the very least, this probably should have been discussed with Rose beforehand. I think her reaction was based on a long history of feeling like she never had as much as her stepsister, whether that's true or not. Not the idiot. You contribute the same amount to her wedding as you did to your bio daughter's wedding. The reason your daughter had more is because of her father. Expecting you to contribute the same amount to both girls from you is the only way it would be fair. It's unfortunate that Rose doesn't have another parent to help contribute, but maybe your future spouse's family can kick in some too. Background My husband and I met while living with his ex. I know it sounds bad, but everything was above board. They had broken up. She was already seeing someone else. I heard her verbally abusing my partner and hooking up with her new partner in the common area, etc. In case anyone thinks I was misled about the nature of their arrangement, Unfortunately, he didn't have the means to move out immediately as she was threatening him financially if he left before their lease was up. This was all over five years ago. I owned my, now our, place when he moved in. So when we later discovered the next door neighbor is her new beau's sister, there wasn't much to be done about it but curse the bad luck. In the last five years, we've moved in together, built a business together, got engaged and married, and have had an excellent relationship. We are now expecting. We hadn't heard from or about his ex until yesterday. On to the idiot moment. Our neighbor is friendly and often asks us about the pregnancy and passing. Yesterday we were letting the dogs out and she asked about the baby and I didn't pay attention when two people walked up behind her. I told her how it's been going when the woman behind her went ballistic. She told me I was a homewrecker, a rebound, and a witch to flaunt my pregnancy in front of her. When I realized who she was, I pointed out that she and my partner were broken up, and presumably, the guy with her was neighbor's brother, her boyfriend, so it worked out best for all of us. She said she had been with my partner longer and never got proposed to, and we were just having a baby to make her feel bad. In not my finest moment, I told her she was crazy if she thought she ever passed our minds when deciding to start a family, and marriage is a love thing, not a time-in thing. Then I walked away while she was still talking. The few mutual friends we have who know her and heard about the run-in have told us we shouldn't have told her we were pregnant, not that I meant to, and she's really hurt because she hadn't expected my partner to move out or move on. Apparently, she hoped I was just a rebound and she would get back with him. I've been told my unkind words to her were petty and uncalled for because she and her boyfriend don't have a great relationship. Also, the neighbor has taken our side, making her relationship with her boyfriend worse. My husband is furious she talked to me that way and is now angry at the friends who dismissed her behavior. So now I feel like an idiot for causing all this drama by not assuming someone visiting our neighbor may have been her or her boyfriend 
and not keeping my mouth shut. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. You didn't cause any drama. Please be clear on that. You were having a conversation with your neighbor. She walked into the conversation and her forgetting the cheating she did while she was with her ex and then saying it in front of her boyfriend, basically that she figured she'd be back with her ex. Like what? Thank God your husband broke up with her and I'm so glad he found you. Not the idiot. It's been five years. I honestly feel like Rose and Titanic. It's been 84 years. She needs to move on. And you shouldn't have to censor yourself when your neighbor asks you about everything. Those friends that agree with the ex are not your friends either. It's not your fault the ex and her boyfriend were there. If anything, the sister slash neighbor was the one flaunting your relationship, not you. Also, it's not your fault the lunatic ex and her boyfriend don't have a great relationship. You do. You're married because he loves you. You are having a baby because of your love. Therefore, anyone with half a brain can see you were completely justified in telling the crazy ex that she did not factor into your lives in any way. I disagree that it wasn't your finest moment. Your reply was perfect. It's been five years. It's about time someone tells her that she's not the center of the universe. I recently left a bad relationship and my kids, Tessa, nearly adult, Kaylee, preteen, Matt, young child, Ava, toddler, and I am staying with my brother. The younger three have the same dad, but I don't know who Tessa's dad is. Tessa's always resented me for that. I dated this great guy, Jack, when she was around two years old, and we almost got married but he got a job at another country when she was six and we couldn't follow him. Shortly after that, I introduced her to my ex-husband, the younger kid's dad, David. She hated him right off the bat, but I assumed it was because she missed Jack and wanted me and him to get back together. David was a bad father and I didn't notice until recently when he started treating Ava and Kaylee similarly. Now to the present, my brother is wealthy. He has three guest rooms and I thought he would put the girls in one room, Matt in another, and me in another. Instead, I got the smallest room. Matt and the younger two girls share a medium-sized room, and the four of us all share a bathroom. Then Tessa got the second master bedroom upstairs with her own bathroom. And if that wasn't enough, he spent thousands of dollars decorating her room. He redid the kids' room, but it wasn't nearly as lovely as Tessa's. Tessa has been driving for over a year, and bought a car shortly after she got her license. My brother called it a piece of crap and said he didn't want her driving it, then spent over $40,000 on a brand new luxury SUV for her. Then he only put himself and Tessa on the insurance, so I can't drive it. Then for Christmas, he bought Tessa an iPhone 13, MacBook Pro, iPad Pro, Bose headphones, accessories for her devices, then spent over $200 on gift boxes from Lush. The other kids got nice gifts, but again, not nearly as nice as hers. Then I got a coffee tumbler. Tessa is starting a new school full of rich kids, and Tessa was worried that she would stand out because her clothes were from Ross or Goodwill. So my brother took her shopping and spent thousands of dollars on new clothes and makeup. I told my brother to stop spoiling her because she already hates me and because she'll be 18 by the time we move out. And if he keeps treating her like this, she won't come with us. He refused because he's trying to make up for the crap that David put her through because I wasn't paying attention. OP, Tessa hates you because you ignored her until her stepdad targeted your younger children. She's never had a father that cared about her. She feels abandoned by you because you've given all of your attention to your younger children. Your brother sees this and is doing his best to make up for it since you obviously aren't going to. You are the idiot. You're right. She's not going to come with you when you move out. And honestly, I can't come up with a reason why she would. You are the idiot. The younger kids need you nearby to help them at night. The oldest daughter can sleep upstairs on her own. How would you take care of the little ones at night if you were in the upstairs bedroom and the oldest daughter was in with the little kids? Or were you expecting that she'd be the one dealing with them at night? Your brother's room allocation with you near the younger kids ensures that you can do your job or parent them and your oldest isn't having her sleep disturbed by the needs of small children at night. Reading between the lines, it sounds like stepdad was a tool and mom enabled it or did some parentification and expected that to continue. 
It sounds like the brother is trying to set her up for success and give her a shot at a normal life or a bit of a childhood. OP, parent your other kids and your daughter needs to live her own life versus continuing to enable you. God, I like how you listed yourself like you're one of the kids he's taking care of. I got a coffee tumbler. Ooh hoo. I see zero gratitude for him taking in your family. If you missed your husband mistreating your kids for years, you have more significant issues than what he's giving to your daughter. Some thoughts. I don't know who Tessa's dad is. Tessa's always resented me for that. Are you sure it wasn't the other way around? Because it sounds like you might resent her. Have you gotten the kids into therapy? You'd be better off working through your relationship with the help of a therapist rather than getting irritated with your brother. My wife and I had our daughter 10 months ago. To be honest, our daughter's pretty large for her age. She's a very big and healthy baby, and we love her very much. But I feel like my wife is already obsessed with her weight. She keeps calling our daughter Chunky Girl or Miss Piggy. She says they're endearing nicknames, and all her side of the family also calls her this. It honestly confuses me why she points out our daughter's weight so much because she's also plus size. When we met, my wife was what people called mid-size and very curvy, but she gained a lot of relationship weight when we got together, which I didn't mind. But recently, I've been reading some parenting books about how much children absorb at this age, and the names have started to bother me. Last night, I finally got the courage after my wife called our daughter Fatty Patty for the first time. I told her to stop calling her fat because it will hurt her self-esteem when she's older. My wife looked shocked and told me there was nothing wrong with being fat. I agree with that point, but disagree entirely that calling our daughter fat, even in an endearing way, will not teach her it's okay to be fat. We argued about it until we got loud enough to upset our daughter, who began crying. She took the baby to another room and came back to tell me I was ridiculous. I then told her her actions are fat phobic and her obsession with our daughter's weight is unhealthy for her and our baby. This upset her immensely and she went to bed. Am I the idiot here? Not the idiot. Guarantee if you call your wife Fatty Patty, she would not find it endearing. Thank you for standing up for your daughter. Your wife is projecting her internalized self-loathing about her weight onto your daughter. This will not only cause self-esteem issues, but could lead to disordered eating. Is it possible there are some postpartum issues she needs to talk to a professional about? Your wife should seek therapy now. Your daughter will start internalizing these negative messages as soon as she's old enough to talk. My sister's obsessed with her weight, and my niece who is three years old constantly says things like, I need to sweat so I don't get fat, and pretends to work out like her mom after she eats anything sugary, which I find very screwed up. This kind of thing will not help create a positive body image for your child. I'm flabbergasted that this is such a big deal. She's a 10-month-old baby, She's supposed to be chunky, and the tone of how your wife is saying it doesn't seem to be an issue. I'm saying you are the idiot because you're accusing your wife of being fat phobic over something as stupid as your infant child's nicknames. You looked at your fat wife lovingly talking to your fat baby, and you decided that being fat was so bad that she should never say the word out loud? Dude, fat is not a bad word.